And then I asked Frederick, my five-year-old grandson, can I get around this problem, Frederick? Do you have an idea? Frederick says, well, I have this vector here, and I'd really like to, that's like the, that's the, like the function value. Let, let's say f of x0, <clears throat> x0. And we have this vector here, that's like f of x0 after moving a little bit. And Frederick says, Grandpa, I know how to do that. It's completely obvious. You just take this back here, you make the trans translation back here. You translate it back here. So here is f of x0. And here is f. Oh, that is not an f of x plus a. That is the inverse parallel transportation from x0 to x1 of, of f of x1. Isn't that true? Isn't that what you're really doing? Fred, what Frederick does is he says, I just bring it back to the same, same space, and I differentiate it. Frederick's right. If, and only if, you are in the geometry of the cutting. If, and only if, you are in flat geometry. He is absolutely wrong, in general, in nature. He is absolutely wrong, in general, in physics. He's absolutely wrong, in general, in all applied mathematics. Okay. You must know a way of parallel transport. The only time the parallel transport can be defined and is independent, I parallel transport this along a curve over here, or I parallel transport it along a curve over here. The only time it's, it's good like this, independent of the curve, is when there's no curvature. Now these guys in the mid-19th century understood this, Riemann, and these guys, Levi Civita in particular, Riemann, uh, Ricci, and von Monschau, Christoffel, understood this fact and realized what parallel transport is. It is, and now you understand the word connection. It is the way to make a connection from one space to another so you can take a derivative. Let me say it again. A connection is a way to make to connect from one space to another so you can take a derivative. Okay. A connection is a way of, of trans parallel transporting from one space to another along a curve. And it will depend on the curve. It will depend on the curve. And we must understand all of this dependence. So we learn from Levi Civita, Ricci, and Christoffel from Monschau, who sat and thought about this before he wrote this down for three years in Monschau in the beautiful area. We now understand that we have to have something called connection. And associated to a connection, and this goes back to Riemann, we will understand what the curvature is. We will understand what geodesic is. We will understand what, ge what distance is. We will understand everything. So there are some words in Riemannian geometry that you will definitely have to learn, one, and understand very well. This was the beginning point, but not so. I wanted to emphasize connection, connection, and the connection to parallel transport. And some of these connections, some are related to Riemannian metrics. These are the words. And to understand all of this picture, the relation of connections to Riemann metrics and so on, you want to understand a modern concept which is called holonomy. So, and the basic Basic theorem, the basic theorem of holonomic theory uh, was proved, I don't know the exact day, but by people I know quite well. So that tells you the nature of the subject. 
it starts in the mid 19th century and is is going on uh, today in, in, in my life by people I know. It is a mod, very modern, very interesting subject. Let me say again, uh, we have to go. Is is that that the subject? What I've explained so far is the subject of ordinary differential equations. After the emphasis uh, on certain directions in modern directions, coming from physics and coming from mathematics, and the emphasis, uh, let me just mention that a very important person in my life and also uh, in the direction here, Chern, so China, this is another, another nationality, originally from China, but did his doctor's degree in Hamburg with Blaschke, and then returned to China and then to Berkeley. So with the emphasis of Chern and some of his students and very important modern considerations, in particular another Chinese guy who we know quite well, this direction has become not a direction of ordinary differential equations, it's become a direction of partial differential equations. And in fact, in a certain sense, a subject of infinite dimensional analysis. Okay. So I thank you for coming. I will start with some precise stuff this afternoon. I wanted to give an overview of what we're trying to do here this afternoon. Is it okay? I have still have to Oh, I have 10 minutes. Oh, great. Okay, let me say again, in summary, and then I'll start from scratch. Very good, thank you. So I'll try to give you an overview of what the subject is about. And the basic concepts that starting with Riemann are the metric, Riemannian metric, and then the connection, and that brings parallel transportation. And once we know parallel transport, we know what derivatives mean. And we see the relation to curvature. And we try to go back to a metric, whatever a metric it means. And as soon as we try that, we have to get involved with something called holonomy. Differential geometry. The subject subject of smooth manifolds with certain further structure. Somebody wrote me, uh, uh, since the lunchtime group won't be, will not, this is your last day. <laughs> so you don't need a precise definition of smooth manifold. And uh, somebody asked me, I think it was a physics person, do I really need to know what is this manifold stuff? And uh, I don't know, did you write something? Yeah, that's what I thought. And the answer is no. The way to say it is this. You have a, a, good, different, a good object you want to study. You have a point on that object, and you have a nice neighborhood of this point, which you can handle by a chart to a page in the atlas. And it means that you can do calculus on this page in this atlas. That's all this means. OK, you satisfied? You can just do calculus. Now, calculus in lunchtime is, I think, you do calculus in last time, right, uh, Mr. Beth? But we, we call it analysis, I think. You call it analysis? Yeah. But I think in high school you do calculus in one dimension, so one variable. Do you, uh, or not? 
Do you do partial derivatives? Mm -hmm. So this, the, the, the difference between what we're talking about here and uh, what they do in, in Lachine is this, sub, this, this, these local charts are n-dimensional. And in any case, uh, where n is some, uh, some number, uh, uh, between starting at 1. Okay. And all of our first discussions, absolutely all of our first discussions will be here. Let me say it again. It is a subject about these global manifolds that we're talking about. But I hope you saw everything I talked about here could be discussed in a chart, really. So all first discussion will be talked about here. So this is just a, uh, an open chart in in n-dimensional space for some n. Okay. Now here we have coordinates x, which is say x1 through xn. Okay. Coordinates. Now I warn you, sometimes we put the index upstairs in this business. Yeah, I try to be consistent from the literature. I don't. You have to watch out what the index means. So and then I write without thinking. Now I'm sorry. I should probably think better. But I wrote the index downstairs. Okay, x1 through x. That's just the index of the chord. We discuss curves here in M. Let's call this let's call this thing U. When I when I I'll call this thing this is a global thing. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll call this thing U. This this set here at R N where I'm going to do my work. I'm going to call it U. If I'm talking about it here, I'll call the set in the manifold M. What we have a curve in the manifold, but I'm really looking at the curve here uh, in this in this uh, neighborhood. So I'm looking at a curve in this neighborhood U, and a curve. Is a, keep in mind, it's not a picture. This is something also learn that you need to describe mathematics not with pictures. You have to know what is really a curve. Yes. I know, I, I, I teach uh, in German university students, and I, I ask them every lecture what I call Frage minus eins. Yes, in the pause, I just a frog of minus size means the minus one question, not the first question, the minus one question. And one of my first questions is define a curve. Define the notion of a curve. Check yourself. You think you can do it? I'm willing to bet you cannot do it. Define, well, I'm going to define it. A curve is a mapping from an interval into U, because I want to consider curves in U. And so I, I can write it in coordinates. Gamma T is X1 of T, Xn of T. <clears throat> and, and a curve in this lecture will be with the assumption xj of t sufficiently differentiable in the classical sense. <clears throat> and intuitively, intuition in the flat in the flat case x point which is 
is the derivative x1 point at time, say x point at time t, which is the derivative of each of the components that is the velocity of the curve at time t in the flat case. Okay. I hope you see, as an example, that we have a curve, gamma. Here is, here is, say, gamma of t0. Say this is in R2. Gamma of t0 is x1 of t0, x2 of t0. And its velocity, as you have learned in school, I hope, in, in elementary physics lectures, is tangent to the curve. Right? And this velocity vector is a vector with Fuchspunkt here. Is the vector with Fuchspunkt there is x, the derivative at this time t0, and the derivative at this time t2. So we have a curve. We have all of this flat derivatives, which represent the velocities. Maybe this is the interval. Maybe is zero to one. And so you would have an endpoint, gamma of zero, and another endpoint, gamma of one. Okay. Now, anybody uh, got a more complicated picture than that? <laughs> yeah, for a smooth curve. I hope you understand. You have a smooth curve, it look like this. Here's gamma of zero. And here's gamma of one, and it might look like this. Right? It's just I didn't say anything about whether it crosses itself or anything. It's, it's, I'm talking about just a smooth curve, which has a velocity at each point. Maybe it even stops for a while. Maybe it goes here and stops for a while and drinks a coffee, and then continues on. I didn't say anything about that. Just a curve. Okay. Given a manifold, you have the space of all smooth curves in that manifold. Smooth curves in this sense. Yeah. Uh, these are local curves that I draw, but you could have global curves, maybe. You could have closed curves. You could have non-self-intersecting curves. You could have piecewise smooth curves. Yeah. I usually require a great deal of smoothness because I want to take derivatives. So that is what we're going to deal with here. Well, I think you're tired of me, and I think it's a good place to stop. This afternoon, I will really begin talking about what, what we have as a result of these smooth curves what it means parallel transformation, what all of these things mean in precise terms. So, see you this afternoon.